What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over source control. So, specifically in this episode, we're going to be going over Perforce being used with Unreal Engine. So, Perforce is highly supported by Unreal, and also it's one that I think not a lot of people know about compared to GitHub. I actually like Perforce more. We can get into the reasons why later. Right now, I'm just kind of showing you uh, the settings that I set for mine. It will depend on your machine, but if you're on a Windows machine, and you're on 64-bit, this is what it'll look like for you. I'm gonna extend this window so you can see it. But this video is a bit different than my other videos because I've recorded everything and I'm gonna be talking over it in time, you know, in this reflection time as opposed to real time. So if you see some jump cuts or something, it's probably because I was testing things out before I was actually implementing them in a lot of cases here. Uh, so the links for both GitHub and Perforce are in the description. You can set it up with the initial part of the video and then just go ahead, open it, type in P4V in your search bar if you don't know how, hit personal server and initialize new personal server or initialize personal Helix server. Forget exactly which, which one it's called, but put in your name. I put in STB, show on the bro, and then put in the path that you want to source control. So for those that aren't familiar with source control, source control is meant to contain all your changes that you've done throughout your project, so in case you break anything or in case your project gets lost, you can pull it and have all your changes back. Right now, I'm just kind of showing you how to open it. I didn't think it needed too much explanation, but I wanted to walk you through the steps that I did. Uh, I've always done it that way. There's different ways you can set it up. You can use an actual server. I don't do any of those things, so feel free to be like, hey, you should do it this way. This is better. I'm just using a personal server because it's free. I don't have to set anything up. I just literally can target a file and start using source control. That's what we want here. Okay. Once you get into Perforce, this is it right here. You're going to have a few buttons you're seeing. I'm just playing around with them. I'll go over them as we use them in this video. But now that I've talked very fast and gathered all my thoughts, we're going to get started here. And it should be a lot easier to understand from here on out. Basically, open it up. Just follow the, the settings and the setup that I had for now. If you get a little pop-up box that tells you, hey, you have stuff in here, you're gonna need to add it to the project, you're gonna do what I'm doing now. So basically, go to your workspace view. It's a little folder, tan little folder next to your Blue Depot view. That's where I was at just then. And click on the top folder of your project, whatever, that we're adding our project to the source control folder, okay? So your workspace is your personal files. Your depot, are the files that are shared. So I, you push things to the depot because if you want multiple people to be using them, or if you just want to keep this history like we're doing, then you want to be able to have things on the depot. The workspace is what we currently have on our machine for this project. So since we had files in there already, if you click on the top folder, right click, hit mark for add, then hit submit, then you'll have all your stuff in the depot like this. You see I'm going through the folders. You can see everything transferred from my workspace that I had to the depot. So don't worry, nothing in the workspace we actually did for this video. It's just a random test project I had. You can use this for any project you'd like. You can see I have three folders in the content folder and three folders in this content folder in Unreal. You can go ahead and use this source control uh, panel that Unreal has, but I personally don't because this is mainly for if you have an actual server up and running and I have no way to connect to it because I just have the personal server that is not meant to actually use a real-life physical server um, that I'm setting up right so instead of doing this I'm just gonna run without source control which is fine it's not gonna actually stop us from using source control at all but we're just gonna have to be more careful and do everything from P4V this actual client instead of inside Unreal Engine Okay, so you see we're in the depot view now, and we're gonna get started by kind of looking at everything we got, figuring out what we wanna add and how we can add stuff to the depot. So the workspace and the depot are now the same. What we're gonna do is see how we can add a folder and a file to the depot. So we make a new file in Unreal. Right now we're making a new folder, and I called it New folder for video because I want it to be extremely transparent what its purpose was. Now, if you have this new folder for video folder added like I do, you can right click on it, go to show in Explorer, 
and it will show you where it's at in your file browser, your file explorer. So once you do that, you can see it's made, it's been created on our machine, great. So we can add it to Perforce, right? Well, not quite. You see it's not actually in the depot. If you go to your workspace, you'll be able to go to content and see it's there. But you're not actually able to add it in any way because there's no content in it. So you can try submitting. It won't actually do anything. You need a file in that folder. If you have uh, files that you go to submit, your folders will come over automatically, which is good. That means instead of trying to add that folder, we just have to go in, add something to it. Let's say a material, but you could have a code class, a blueprint, anything you want. Literally any file type you want, that I'm aware of anyway. Go ahead and save it. I just made a material, new material for video. It did show in Explorer, and you can see that it is in the new folder for video. That way, we actually have content in there. So if I hit the refresh button, refresh will update everything you've done since the last time you were on Perforce. There you go. You can see that the uh, material is actually in there. So if I right click, hit mark for add, I can now go up to the content or whatever folder that I want to submit, submit everything that I've changed. I've just added that one file and I want to write my description. So basically add a new material for the game but you can add whatever you want, call it whatever you want. Now, when I go to the depot, um, you won't have to hit refresh because when you submit, it automatically refreshes. So now the folder is there and now the new material we made is also there. So we've officially gotten a file and a folder that we just made after uh, the Perforce server was already initialized and we've gotten it onto the depot. So this is how you can keep file revision history. You can literally just add things to this remove them when necessary, and they all have their own versions. You, see, you can see it's one out of one right now because we've only submitted one change with it. As we add more changes to it, there's more things that are going to change with it. So we can kind of change between the version numbers. So you can see I'm going into my material. I made a vector parameter and I'm going to attach a color. I accidentally attached the red node when I meant to attach the color node, which is the white one at the top, into base color. I'll fix it here in a second but I'm just setting up a color so that you can see what the changes are. I thought this would be easier than like nodes in a blueprint, just seeing the actual colors that are on the screen. I think it's a pretty good way of describing it, but see, so I made it this pink color. I've attached it to the base color of the material return node. And now if you apply and or save, which applies for you, then you'll see I can actually use this material in the world and we will be able to determine what version we're on using that color. So I'm attaching the material to a cube. Here we go. And now I can have my, yeah, I got my nice new material in the world. He looks excellent compared to all of his bland cube friends. What we want to do is now submit this change to the depot. So now we want this new material, or the we want the material we already had to be updated to the pink material. So there we go. We went ahead and we submitted it. So remember to always right click and check out files when you go to change them. That way the game knows that you're changing them. And I did a little bit off, off screen here so you can see that I've made it green now but that doesn't actually matter what color it is. Just make sure you check out before you do any changes to any of your materials. But say I've made it green now and I'm like, eh, I don't know if I like this as much as the pink one. I think I want to go back. So, or, or maybe I don't know the exact colors of the pink one, the exact color. I didn't write it down. So I want to go ahead and revert my changes. Now, when you have a file checked out and you go to revert, you'll get this little window. If it's the first time you're doing it, it'll tell you the files that you're trying to revert, the action, and then you can choose if you want to revert them or not. I actually don't like this window being displayed, so I always turn it off, but you can keep it open. Hit revert when you're ready, and those changes will just simply go away. So now we'll go back to the last version we had. It's worth noting that if you have Unreal open like I do here, then the things won't change. So Perforce works by basically exchanging your version that you have on your workspace with the version in the depot. Well, if you've ever gotten those errors where Windows is like, hey, can't uninstall this right now, it's being accessed by another program, or can't delete this right now, whatever. That's what's happening, two objects are accessing it. 
So if you close Unreal, her force can do its stuff. You reopen it, your material is back to pink or whatever color you had it at. So then we are good to go. We've essentially gotten rid of the changes we made. Make sure, again, if we're gonna make changes to this material again, we wanted to check it out again. When you revert, uh, it stops checking out the objects that you're on. So there's ways to change that, options you can set to configure it, but by default it does that. So make sure before you change it, always check it out. Um, if you don't check it out, it's not the end of the world, but the problem is your version control will be slightly weird. So if you don't check it out, then you would have light green on your workspace and the last version would be pink. So when you got late, if someone else were to pull the project, they could have a different result than you. But basically, if you go into Perforce and click into view, and I couldn't find it, but history, you can see all your changes. I closed the files tab because we don't really need it right now. So click on whatever folder you want and go to history. It'll tell you all the changes and who made them. So you should probably change it from one being at the top and have the most recent at the top because as you get more and more changes you're going to have to scroll down every time which would be annoying but it tells you the change list who changed it the date and the change revision number so there you go you can actually go through your history see what you've changed um i'm checking out my file again to show you hey i'm checking out this file this material now it shows up in my pending tab the pending tab is what you currently have edited since the last time you submitted Basically, whatever's in your change list, there are things that you've changed that you haven't pushed to the depot yet. So now that you've checked it out and you see that it's pending in the depot, what we can do is do a nice little change here. You can see how it's actually like a white paper with a check mark. That means it's checked out. And you can see that in here, you know, we can set whatever color we want. And we're lime green now, whatever. Now. <laughs> SpongeBob color. We are now we have a blue paper. That means we've not only checked out this file, but changes have occurred in this file since we have submitted it or since we checked it out even. Or it's basically it's different from what's in the workspace and what's on the depot. So if you want to make yours blue, by default you'll only get the check mark, but go to edit, preferences, files and history and use a distinct file icon for modified files. Uh, I hit apply here and I think it will change and I'm like, why didn't that work? It actually just literally doesn't do anything. So just hit okay. There you go. And you can see it's still checked out. My change, my file has still been modified, but it's purely white. That's the default. But if you go back and change it again, edit preferences, and then uh, put it back on, then you can see it's blue. So if I've changed the file, if it's different on the workspace than it is for the depot, it is blue. Just a nice little visual indicator for you. That is the very, very quickest way I could explain source control, especially per force for anybody uh, first time around. It took me a very long time to learn it. So I might've gone over things a little bit quickly. This is also not usually the way I do my videos. So I usually do them in real time. I honestly believe it'll be a little bit confusing to newcomers, so I apologize. Uh, please, please, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to help out and get any issues you have sorted. So if you're interested in getting any assistance from the Discord, from myself personally, or some of my friends, and great, great community that we have, then please feel free to join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. If it helped you out, or if, you know, you got your project working with some Perforce, then please subscribe. It helps me more than anything else you can do for the channel, and just lets me know I'm doing a good job. Lastly, guys, feel free to join us on twitch.tv slash seantheroad27. Again, there's 26 other Show on the Bros, so kind of sucks that I'm the 27th one. But no, in all actuality, uh, we play Souls Wednesday and Resident Evil Friday, which is becoming Horror Games Friday as we finish Resident Evil here. But we just have a good time hanging out in a wonderful community, and I figured I'd let you know. So if you guys are interested, feel free to join us in all those things. And if not, I'll see you in the next episode, everyone. I'm showing the bro. Goodbye.